Good morning. I'm John McLaughlin from Biochar Northeast, and I'm here to promote uh, biochar uh, for uh, as a soil supplement and easy ways that the homemaker can actually make it. Uh, one of the first things that we kind of did is to use wood pellets. Wood pellets, you fill up what's known as a, as a one gallon tea lud. This is your basic paint can. Put it on three nails, you put up an aerator so when the thing burns off, it wind up capturing it. Those gases will mix with air up on the top. You've got air that comes in through the bottom of the bucket. <clears throat> you light it on top using some alcohol. With the alcohol with some chips, put it on there, light it with a match. It winds up burning from the top all the way down to the bottom. But to actually make it so it, it, it draws well, you want to put an aerator in because you've got air coming up from the bottom. If this is known as a top lit updraft. You light the top of it and it updrafts all the way up to the top. But you mix air in the top here, put a flue on it. When the flame front comes all the way down and you can see it glowing on a, a bright red, it means that the, 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 the flame front's all the way down the bottom. At that point, you can just take this top off, take the nails out, suff you know, suffocate it, put a top on it, a paint lid top on it, it suffocates it, let it cool, and you wind up getting very usable biochar out of wood pellets. So, go over what, why biochar is so important these days. The, the advantages of using biochar as a soil supplement is that it winds up uh, retaining moisture, which is very good for, say, high clay soils, and so they'll allow moisture to get in there, or uh, high sandy soil, where moisture doesn't retain at all because it drains right out. So it retains moisture, but when it retains moisture, it also retains all the micronutrients that are in, that are available, like potassium and phosphate. And it's phosphate they're trying to capture to keep it out of, uh, say, Lake Champlain, or at least the river, rivers and streams that don't wind up accumulating there because it uses, it causes the huge algae blooms in Lake Champlain. A lot of work's being done to see if you can capture that the phosphorus is versus being able to have it run off. The reason that the phosphorus is, is avail or winds up on the soil is that if you put manure in there, oh, I'm sorry, back it up a little bit. Corn is a very phosphorus intensive uh, you know, feedstock. They, they gotta grow it to feed the cows. The cows eat it, they wind it up in a manure. So manure is very high in phosphorus. The phosphorus they spread out in the soil, it doesn't wind up, you know, it winds up running off and it winds up in your groundwater, it goes off to the stream. So you can capture it, which biochar will do. A lot of research being done on how to make that more effective. But you can take that biochar, which has all those nutrients in it, or in your garden, uh, captures those nutrients, and it, and it winds up being a very good environment for the microbes that wind up taking those nutrients and make them available to the plant. It's healthy for your plant. It also is a nice way of stabilizing carbon because the manure, you'd have to put it in, well, every year, but you, if you put it in once, in two, three years, the effect of it would all be gone away. It'd all be reduced by the microbes and, you know, up somewhere. Whereas the biochar, when you make it out of, you know, wood product or any sort of forest waste product, you can, it'll wind up sequestering that carbon and you put it in once, get your carbon content in your soil up there, it's there for you in the foreseeable future. We're talking a half-life of 500 to 1,000 years easily. So, effectively, would you be reducing your need for chemical fertilizing? Yes, absolutely. Uh, it also is a good way of using, you know, waste products, both forest agricultural waste, you can make biochar out of corn stover, you can make it out of the, the chaff for wheat. Uh, Japanese use a lot of corn or rice husk to make biochar out of it. And they wind up putting that back in the soil as a soil supplement for all the advantages of biochar. So, um, but it would reduce the need for chemical fertilizer. Right, and how much biochar per uh, acre, or do you have a sort of a, a chart? If, or if, you're, if you're really trying to use it for agricultural purposes, uh, you really need about. You, you want to get your bio. You want to get your carbon content of your soil up between five and maybe ten percent. 
An example of that is, is the terra preta they find in the Amazon River Basin. And they know that from archaeological research that the sites of this black earth supported Indian populations of hundreds and hundreds of Indians for hundreds and hundreds of years, which is a lot different than the very weak soils of the Amazon rainforest that they slash and burn, use it for agricultural purposes, you know, like contemporary purposes, slash and burn it, agricultural purposes, and that soil is completely exhausted two to three years. And so we don't quite know how these old societies, this is all pre-Columbus you know, pre discovered in America, how they actually did it. But they know it was human activity because they found fish charts and, or fish bones and, and pottery charts to the depth of up to six feet. But it's black earth. Terra Preta means black earth in Port Portuguese. So, uh, but it, it shows that it's, and it, and it's still in the soil. So that's why this half-life of a, you know, five to a thousand years is very, probably conservative, but it really does, it's a stable form of carbon when you produce it out of uh, biomass at a high temperature, and then when it winds up being the pure carbon form, then you uh, wind up, you know, you know stopping, you, you don't want it to gasify off and wind up being all CO2 in the air. So you capture the pure carbon form, which is a form of graphite plates, it winds up retaining this moisture, with the moisture it retains the micronutrients and makes those micronutrients available to the plants or the microorganisms that grow. Now let me show you a couple other kind of neat ways of using biochar. These are these are some stoves that I've made up. This is what a natural draft stove would be, and you support it on some three nails, fill it up with wood pellets, and Light on the top, let it burn down, put on here, and that's this this particular one right here is, is this natural draft one. <clears throat> this is a power base. Use a nine volt battery, a computer fan with a power base. Again, another can on here. Put this <clears throat> you here, drop this can down inside. Put a retainer ring over the top. Put a flue on top of that. You get this one here, a very usable lamp. And basically what you're doing is uh, using the best example I can think of is a fireplace, the yellow flames in a fireplace. You light it, you wind up burning off all those yellow gases, and then, you know, that's what makes the fire warm. What you're doing is you're, you're thermally decomposing the wood and it produces what's called pyrolytic gases, which is methane, uh, so carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide because that's a combustion product, a little acetylene, and all these things all gas off. When your fire dies down, let the, the fire go out, you'll see the, the glowing coals of wood. Well, if you look at it carefully, you'll find out it's really burning in a light blue flame, and that's the pure carbon being reduced to CO2. So if you can stop the thing being gasified, and you can either you know drown it, or you can just snuff it out, put a top on it, and it'll extinguish it, let it cool, and it winds up in its form. Grind it up, put it in your soil. If you're really gonna make a lot of quantities for it, <clears throat> you wanna use a 55 gallon barrel. You put a retort in it, This retort, fill it up with stock, whether it's dimensional lumber that you know is being discarded, or whether it's uh, you know your, your 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 hardwood limbs just chunked up, but you wind up putting a chunk forth, fill up your retort, fill up your retort with wood, flip it upside down in your 55 gallon burn barrel. Pack the outside ring, the space left, with wood. Light the wood on the top, because down on the bottom you've got a lot of openings. But you light the barrel on the top. When the thing gets going, you put your, your barrel lid over, and this is nothing but a you know a, a three three foot flue, 
a sheet metal flue that came out here. It makes a very clean stream. Notice there's no black smoke coming out of this. <clears throat> and this flame front is about a foot down from the top of the barrel. So you know it's hot. And there's no flames coming out. And you wind up getting a very usable biochar that looks like that. So everybody, everybody made their own biochar. Everybody across the country and put it in their garden or their soil. We won't be sequestering the carbon that is about me. Why we have sort of parts per million in the atmosphere? Uh, it would definitely impact on, it would definitely reduce that. Plus it would use up uh, waste products to be left to be converted to CO2 anyway. If you, if a tree falls out in the forest and you do nothing else, it's going to disappear in 10 years. Well, where does it go? It winds up uh, being broken down by the microbes and it's eventually going to wind up in the atmosphere. It's, it's carbon dioxide. That carbon will be recycled back up because that's where it came from originally. Plants convert CO2 into carbon and make oxygen. When it winds up decomposing, that carbon will wind up being, you know, broken down by the soil microbes and you wind up with CO2. If you use those at scrap product, make biochar out of it, it sequesters that carbon and that CO2 doesn't go up there. So instead of that tree falling down in the forest, rotting in 10 years, if you could bring it in, convert it to biochar, you've stabilized probably 40% of the carbon content by weight as a very stable form of carbon, uh, 500 to 1,000 years. Would you like to uh, say your name and how people can get in touch with you? Yes, I'm John McLaughlin. I'm with uh, Northeast, I'm sorry, Biochar Northeast, and you'll find us on a website called 3 w Biochar, B I O C H A R N E dot org. And please, please look at our website. Feel free to contact me. Phone number is 802 353 2124. Thank you very much.